Yo, what is up guys, Grim here, and today we're going to be doing a quick League update, and I'm going to give you my final thoughts and tips on emblem farming in the domain of Timeless Conflict. So this is going to be the last advice video for the domains, um, because I've gotten a lot of questions since my last video, and then I'll also do another video um, detailing the build guides of both me and my support, how they work together, and how you can kind of replicate um, what we did. <clears throat> so that'll be another video, but in this one, I'm going to give you some final thoughts, um, a few uh, additional results. There's not going to be any spreadsheets this time, just kind of like off the cuff, um, things that we've discovered, noticed, and all that kind of stuff. So to begin with, we managed to push this even further. Um, in a lot of the rounds where we, we weren't getting any lag or server issues, we were actually able to get up to five bars around the minute 45 mark in the five-way emblem fights um, pretty consistently, and sometimes we even got it to two minutes. Um, obviously, there's a bit of RNG involved with how many um, loot spawn mobs like spawn in. Uh, that's just going to be part of the deal. Like, obviously, you'll get more some runs and less other runs. Um, <clears throat> but what this actually allowed us to do is make some interesting comparisons. So we also did a few more four-way emblems, and we were able to get that um, content, the four-way, up to five bars as well, um, using some different items, which I'll go into in a second. Now, what was interesting about this is now we had a benchmark to compare the loot between five and like six and a half bars in theory. And um, what this allowed us to do is actually pretty much for, uh, I don't know, it's not a hundred percent because obviously we can never know, but um, it was about, it was a lot more loot. That's basically what I'll say. Um, just because we were able to kill and kill and kill uh, past the five bar part um, point. And uh, it was very, very, very noticeable um, when we did that, like when we went additionally ham. Um, with those additional rewards. So my guess is that the loot um, bar thing is just visual and the loot actually scales far beyond that for as many as you can kill, um, which is actually probably pretty bad uh, for the economy overall. And you'll see that when you see my stash, um, which I'll show you guys, uh, because it's completely ridiculous how many items this thing um, is generating. Like we were getting to the point where we almost got four jewels every run. Um, so again, that's a bit more information. If you do just kill the bosses so many times, they just start to drop the jewels pretty much every time, which is probably not so great for the price of those jewels. Um, and it, it's just a lot of loot, like multiple T6s, everything like that. So it's probably not the best. Uh, I think they probably should cap it next league uh, at five. That would probably be smart. Um, but yeah, it does scale beyond. So there's definitely a lot of rewards to be had for everyone who can push their build to the absolute limit, um, which is pretty cool. So yeah, the loot is absolutely insane. Um, but one thing that I did want to talk about is the Maraketh Jewel. Um, I, I can't remember, I think it's called Brutal Constraint. Yes, that is it. So at the end of the day, I've been counting our runs. We ended up doing 105 five-way emblem runs. Um, so I've done a lot of this content, like probably too much. Um, and you would think, you would think that we would get the jewel in that amount of time. We've gotten hundreds of the other jewels over all of our play sessions. Like we've gotten, we've got, I think I got like 500 of the jewels right now. It's ridiculous. Um, but no, we didn't get a single Maraketh jewel. This thing is, it, it exists because I bought one for um, 18 and a half exalts. And there's a few listed. Uh, it, it's, it's, it's mind blowing how rare this thing is. Um, it's right up there with like kind of a mirror tier rarity item. Um, we're talking the Edziri's shield, the mirror shield, that, that kind of rarity, how the prophecy just was nowhere. No one had it. Um, that's the level of rarity this jewel is. There's tons of people farming these now, and there's still none on the market, which is quite mind-blowing. That's why I picked mine up as soon as I kind of figured this out. I was like, oh man, we're not going to get one, are we? And we didn't, uh, which is pretty insane. So yeah, that jewel, if you're wanting to buy it, I would recommend picking it up probably um, now, try and get it for about 20 exalts. It's a very good jewel. In my opinion, it's probably um, one of the most overpowered with really good rolls. If you have the Floss Nodes, um, you'll do very well. The Floss Nodes are completely ridiculous. 8% on each Notable is a lot. Um, so yeah, that jewel is very, very powerful, but we'll be going into the jewels in a separate video. So the next thing I want to talk about is what you're seeing in the background here. Complete and utter insanity, maintaining 30 to 40 headhunter buffs at a time. Um, how is this possible? And a lot of people have been asking me why I'm using these strange items, which I'll go into on my profile after this round finishes, because everyone complains they don't get to see the loot. Um, and that is that I am using, obviously, the headhunter, the two inspired learnings, but I am taking a page out of Cute Dog and Empyrean's book, and I'm using self-curse temp chains. 
um, using a mechanic in the game which allows you to basically put that curse on you. And what Temporal Chains does is it extends buff and debuff effects on the target afflicted by an amount. I don't know the exact amount, but we are doing that. And what that actually does is it extends the duration of all your Headhunter buffs. And to kind of give you an idea of how much we're looking at here, so I get about a 30% more Headhunter buffs from the Amulet, which is the Solstice Vigil, and that took me up to about maintaining about 20 to 22 in um, five ways. But then after going to self curse Chem Chains, um, we now maintain around 35 to 40 Headhunter buffs for a lot of the duration of this fight. And, um, oh, ooh, big loot explosion. Um, what this will allow you to do is basically kill the bosses faster, be a lot safer. Like you can see, I'm on 8k life right now. Um, and um, you'll, you'll basically be faster as well and shoot more projectiles, you'll more consistently kill everything. Um, and I do believe at the end of the day, this is ultimately the correct build um, for farming these. Unless you're looking to go really crazy with the efficiency, like speed, you want to get like five bars at like two minutes consistently. Um, you probably want to look into something else then because there's a few drawbacks which I will discuss in um, just a minute now as I go into the air. So here we are, we're in hideout, um, we've got the gear on, and we'll quickly just chat about it. So the item I was talking about is Shackles of the Wretched. You can read here, it says curses in this item are reflected back to you. So we use um, a Herald of Lightning, sorry, Herald of Thunder, um, Curse on Hit, Temporal Chains, with the Enhanced to give it even more um, effectiveness, and that'll put Temporal Chains on us. So Temp Chains is a pretty nasty curse, uh, it'll slow you down a lot, it'll make you attack really slow. Um, so to combat this, you use Combs Roots, and what Combs Roots does is it basically says action speeds cannot be modified below their base value, which means Temporal Chains doesn't have any negative movement effects or attack effects on you, um, to my knowledge, and it doesn't feel like that either. Now, in order to do this, though, we do have to give up our gloves and boot slots. Now, it is completely worth it, but it does actually mean that you cannot um, do some other things which are quite effective too. So for about 20 or 30 runs, we were actually running a different setup to this, and we just swapped over this to the end for a bit of fun and for testing it out. So before this, what we were running was, um, I'll just jump in the tab here, we were running uh, Seven League Steps and Rampage Gloves. So the thinking behind this was that seven league steps would give you obviously the 50% increased movement speed, which is around 20 to 15, it's about 20 to 15% yet yeah, faster than normal boots, which is a lot when it's multiplied out by um, headhunter buffs as well as tailwind, which is the um, the dead eye ascendancy. And then we also have rampage, which when you get up to a thousand stacks gives you a ton of flat percent increased damage, which is completely insane. It also gives you movement speed and it also has a few kind of cool gimmicks that happen when you trigger rampage stacks. Um, so it was pretty cool, it was very fast, and in terms of comparing the two builds, um, I would say that the chains, the temp chains, shackles is better, especially for solo players, because you can just get more damage out of it. But in terms of speed, I think the overall clear is actually probably pretty similar, um, just because when you're starting off, you're not going to have as much movement speed, attack speed, any of that kind of stuff with the shackles temp chains. You lose quite a bit of damage by swapping over to this um, initially. So that first round of bosses is actually quite a bit slower than using this setup. But again, both of the uh, sets of items here are very cheap. Um, as long as you have the Headhunter and the Inspired Learnings already, you can kind of just pick whichever one you find um, good. So with that out of the way, I kind of want to just go into um, another topic that a lot of people have been covering. So everyone keeps asking me, can I do this amount of emblems with X or five emblems with Y. Um, I don't have a support, will I be able to do it? Um, this is actually a very difficult question for me to answer because I started off the league, I had no idea what emblems were, I just was like, okay, I'll do the usual, I'll get my headhunter, I'll get my gear, and then we'll have fun with the league mechanic. This is basically what I do every league, and I'm kind of like, I understand that you want to go into these league mechanics with max gear, that's kind of my understanding of things, um, and how you get the most out of this endgame. So when people ask me if they can do it with like our headhunter and stuff like that, I don't really have a perspective on that, because I had maximum gear going into them um, initially. Having said that though, um, I do know for a fact that these can be completed solo as the same build as what I'm doing right now. Someone sent me a video of them getting five bars of loot solo um, with a tornado shot build. However, that did have the headhunter um, and the double inspired learnings, so you do need to keep that in mind. So in terms of the question, can you do this solo? Absolutely, you can do it solo and get five bars of loot even in the five-way um, emblems. Um, in terms of other builds, I'm not too sure. Uh, you just have to test it for yourself. And what I'm going to recommend to you guys is exactly the process that I went through at the start of the league. So after I got my gear and I was done with um, farming T16s and I had 
you know, basically everything I needed. Uh, I wanted to experiment with emblems, so what I did is I just started buying them, and we started off with two ways, and very quickly we started to learn the efficiencies and like what was required, and we started to make tweaks to our build. Now it's very important because, um, I mean, of course you can just copy and paste what I'm doing, but if you have a different build to me, that's not going to work. So what you need to do is experiment for yourself and really come up with your own ideas. So like maybe you need more movement speed if you're going too slow, maybe you need more single target damage if you're playing something like Essence Train. So suddenly maybe you want to try Blight, Contagion, all that kind of stuff together. And now maybe you can kill them really quickly. It's going to be a bit of an experimentation phase for all of you guys. But what I would recommend is scaling it up from 2, 3, 4, and then go to the 5s. Once you feel like you've got that speed, that understanding, and that knowledge. Um, I've talked to quite a few other groups who have the full setup, like we've got right now, like who copied the support, all that kind of stuff. Um, and they're actually um, still having trouble because they don't really understand the kind of... Um, Let's see if I still have this up here, actually. Whoops. Um, they don't understand the, like, kind of rotation order. So I'll go through that really quickly because I think it is um, a bit of an important information. So this is the last run that we did here. Whoa, what is that? Um, and basically, I just want to talk about some efficiency things, which can really speed you up and get you a lot more currency. So in terms of the layout of which where you want to go and how you want to start. <clears throat> so I'm going to start off with the five ways because it includes all the bosses and I can kind of talk about it in that way. So in terms of what we discovered, what you want to do first is always leave the Templar boss till last. And the reason for that is, is for at least my build, I want to go to him when I have maximum amount of head on a boss. And the reason for that is because he has an immunity phase. Um, well, a pseudo immunity phase, um, which is very annoying and can slow down your run and reduce the amount of loot you have. So you want, when you get to him, you want to be able to one shot him, which is um, really important. Um, and in the five ways, the first boss you want to start off with is the Mariketh boss, which is the person on the dinosaur. It was like it's like a dinosaur thing, um, and you want to do that for a few reasons. The first reason is that. Um, it's probably one of the easiest bosses. Um, the Val and the Arrow guy can be kind of tanky, and the Mariketh boss doesn't feel tanky really at all. Um, and she doesn't really do too many crazy things, which we've found. So when you get over here, you want to kill her. That's the first reason. And once you do, she'll go into a pseudo-immunity phase um, where she dismounts the dead um, dinosaur and she turns into like a humanoid form. Now, while she's doing that, you actually want to run up to the next boss up here. And you want to start your rotation around the room. Um, and what, what this will allow you to do is um, it'll allow you to get all the way around, all the way around, and you'll get to the Templar, you'll one-shot him, and by the time you're here one-shotting the Templar, she's now off her mount and you can come back up here. So the reason this is really important is it allows you to do just one full circle. You don't actually ever have to go like backtrack all the way around and all this kind of crazy stuff. Now, another really important thing to note is that the bosses always spawn in the exact same locations in terms of their kind of setup. They might have a few variations on their positioning, but the exact setup is always the same. So the Marikath boss is always over here, so this is where you want to start. The um, the Arrow boss is always up here, um, the, the Eternal Empire guy. Um, the Val boss is always over here or around here, and then the um, <clears throat> the Karui boss is always down here, that's um, Hiri. And then finally the Templar boss is always going to be in the bottom left, so you want to leave that until last. My next tip for actually the running formation is that if the Templar goes immune, you just skip him, start a new wave and go around again. Because he just takes, it's too tedious to try and use his mechanic to break him out and stuff like that. So just skip him, the statues will despawn, and next time you can one shot him, it's not, you actually lose more loot than you gain by trying to wait for him if you know what I mean. So that's the kind of strat in the domain. Um, hopefully that has helped a few of you guys. So yeah, that's um, that's gonna be all most of the stuff I have to talk about about the domains. So yeah, obviously the loot scales, which is pretty cool. It's absolutely insane. As you saw in that video, you're getting so much stuff. It's probably a little too good. Um, and then obviously the Meritith Jewel, if you don't have that and you want it, I would recommend picking that up pretty soon. Um, and then obviously we've got the two um, varying builds here, the shackles and the rampage slash movement speed. So that's everything that we just discussed then. Um, I, I kind of just want to give you guys a bit of a league update on what I'm doing as well um, and what I plan to do. So first of all, um, the, the latest clean out, actually we'll go into the level first. Um, we did actually manage to hit level 100 in the timeless domains, um, which is pretty cool. I would tentatively say that it's the best XP in the game if you have good clear speed. So it probably took us about, we were getting about 3-4% to 4 of level 100 XP um, per run. So it took us about 30 runs um, to get to level 100. 
uh, which is actually pretty insane. That's actually ridiculously fast pace for a level 100 push. So I don't know, it took about five minutes and 15 seconds to do one of these um, runs. And then we had a few minutes of looting time. So you can, we got it in about an afternoon to level 100, which is something that I never thought I would do. I never thought I would get to level 100. So it's pretty incredible that I actually managed to um, end up with that. It was kind of by accident, uh, which is pretty funny. So with that covered, let's go into um, what the next plans for the league are and kind of just like the ridiculousness of this um, mechanic. So a lot of people have been questioning me saying, is it actually worth it? Are you actually going to make money? Um, I stopped counting after that spreadsheet, um, but just to put it in perspective, just how ridiculous this is, uh, I'll just go through some of these tabs. So we have all these incubators, fossils, all this, all this random just garbage, which sells for so much. Like, look at all these prime resonance. Like, what? why are these here? Um, I have, if you actually look at the jewels, I just have so many of these things. I don't even know what to do with them. I haven't even sold any of them yet because I just didn't need the currency. Um, but it, it's just ridiculous how many of these jewels you get. Um, I just end up with so many of them, it's absurd. I don't really know what to do with them. There'll probably be a few videos on them because I have so many of them. Um, but yeah, uh, the upshot is it's just, it's there's no way you're not going to make money off doing these um, emblems. If you're doing something um, similar to the group that we uh, have going here. So I still have a ton of emblems left. Um, probably going to take a break from these because we've run so many of them uh, and do some different content. Um, but yeah, we got we got a ton of like uniques, obviously, um, Carcass Jack, all that stuff like that. Uh, some highlights I will talk about is that the, uh, the you get so many good divination cards in here. Uh, it's it's absurd. So to a few of the highlights of the runs is we got two of the Six Link Prophecy Faded Connections. Uh, that was within like five runs of each other as well, so it was pretty insane. Uh, that was just like plus 14 exalts out of nowhere. Um, we got a Fiend card, we got multiple Nurse cards. I think I almost have a set of Combs cards. Obviously we've gotten, I think we've gotten up to four of Spark in the Flames overall now. It's ridiculous. Um, we got multiple Star Forge cards, like three or four of them. Multiple Ferals cards, like three or four of them. It's so stupid. Um, and I don't understand why they make stacked decks drop as many as they do in there, but opening them is pretty fun and you get so much i got a fiend card from one of the stack decks um so yeah but it's just complete insanity um obviously we have a ton of exalts here um most of these are just dropped from the timeless domains which is kind of dumb after we went to um the rampage and the um the movement speed boots and the shackles kind of combs and really ramped it up we started getting a lot more tier one currencies like three or four sometimes a run obviously some runs we only got like one or two uh, but yeah, pretty crazy. A lot of Exalted Shards drop as well, so pretty insane. More Incubators. Um, just completely dumb. Like, selling hundreds and hundreds of Sacrificial Fragments because so many drop in there. Aziri sets, Shaper sets, all of these Breach Zones drop heaps of them as well. Um, it just, it, it basically, it can drop anything and everything in the game. Um, legacy items, like basically like um, Headhunter, Xerfi's Heart, um, you can get them in there as well. We didn't get any of those. Um, the best we got was like a Chevron's Revelation, which used to be a lot of money. Um, but yeah, tons of T16 maps. Um, I already sold a ton of them, but a ton of them drop like Vault Temples, weird stuff, unique maps, um, Beach Heads drop, lots of jewels here again, lots of incubators. Um, a lot of these um, time lost incubators drop as well, which is like insane currency. Basically, just tons of just stuff. Just so much stuff. So many scarabs, just so much everything is just going to drop in there. It's absurd. It's completely absurd. It needs probably some adjustments. Uh, anyway, so that's going to be that. So in terms of my plans for the future, um, I do want to come up and uh, say a few things. I've been doing a lot of testing with incubators, um, which is very, very cool. Uh, a lot of them are very, very, very profitable. Very, very, very profitable, in fact. Like, it's ridiculous how profitable they are. Um, so you, that's going to be a video coming up. I'm sure uh, uh, maybe you guys should do a few tests on your own before I put that video out. The next thing I want to do is obviously a massive historic um, jewel video um, with so many jewels. In my possession i feel like i'm in a pretty unique position to kind of uh, make some cool videos about that um i do also have the marraketh jewel which is pretty cool um so i can kind of mess around with that i actually think this is the best one so it's going to be fun trying to divine that into something cool uh the next one is um i want to do a lot more uh, map stuff like monolith stuff i want to do divination card um video i want to make sure we get all those locations found and kind of like see how good they are to farm that's going to be pretty fun and then finally uh, another thing I want to do, the icing on the cake, is going to be a max rarity 
insane build using the white um, jewel, what is it called? Elegant Hubris. Basically, it has a mod on it which adds to Notable's 80% increase rarity. Uh, with the amount that I have, I'm hoping I have one which like hits like all of these nodes. <laughs> so I'll just have like 2000% increased rarity with quantity of the year, um, which sounds like a lot of fun to me. So there's probably going to be all that and more coming up. I'm definitely not done with Legion and it's been a complete blast so far. Expect a lot more videos coming up and I'll see you guys in the next one. Cheers.